I'm Tom Ray from the band Lorenzo's Music, and you're listening to the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. So here's an interesting chain of events that led to the show that I'm doing here today. Our recent album that we just released, Romcom Mixtape, was something where we decided to try and record the entire thing using open source tools and technology. Being a Creative Commons band, it just seemed like a natural thing to do. And what we found was there was an operating system, an entire computer operating system that had everything we needed to record, make videos, artwork, all kinds of stuff with free software already installed and set up on it. And it was called Ubuntu Studio. So I thought it would be interesting to find out more about this actual operating system itself. The only way I could find to contact the people was on their Facebook page. So I reached out to see if they wanted to talk to me on the show. One of the things that I discovered while doing this interview was that this operating system was almost on its deathbed. My name is Eric Eichmeier. I'm the council chair for Ubuntu Studio. We might get a little technical on this since Eric and I both use this. But if you haven't checked it out yet, or if you're even curious, you should really see what the Ubuntu Studio operating system is all about. And you can check that out at ubuntustudio.org. Do you also make music? I am not as much of a musician as I have been in the past. I used to play like drums and stuff back in high school, but uh, it's been like decades since then. So, but I help support other musicians make music. And how did you get involved with the Ubuntu Studio project? Well, back in, I believe it was February, there was a call out for needing some extra help and that the project was pretty much on its deathbed. And so back in February, there was a call for people to join up and be on a council, actually. And I got in, I'm like, okay, well, I've got leadership experience. I basically, in my day job, I help with volunteers, volunteer management, volunteer leadership. So I'm like, okay, well, I can do what I can to put my skills to use here. I've been using Ubuntu for since Intrepidivix back in uh, 2008, so almost, so pretty much 10 years now. I, I was just like, oh, let's, you know, there's some tools here that I could see perhaps perhaps dying with, from other projects if it's not supported by a distribution such as Ubuntu. When I saw this happening, I was like, this is not good. This is not good for the entire community. This is not good for musicians. This is not good for audio engineers, video producers, artists in general. This is a flavor of Linux that needs to keep going. So that I decided to go ahead and get in, get passionate about it, and do what I could to kind of start rallying the troops. So we kind of came up with some times to have our meetings so we started our meetings and i uh, and we came in i'm like is there any sort of agenda and i was like no not really uh we don't know really what we're gonna be doing right now so i'm like okay let's get started i'll go ahead and run this meeting then <laughs> and let's hammer out what's going on what are we working on what can we do to improve the project that kind of thing after that it was pretty much okay well here here's kind of what we've funneled down to being the council and eric by the way you've been act kind of acting as chair so you get to have that i've been involved for two months now and i'm already pretty much chair of this project so nice th that was back in uh march april and i also ended up acting as release manager at that time too and oversaw the release of 1804 even though i oversaw the development of maybe uh, about a month of it you know okay, okay. <laughs> so it, but i i still put my stamp of approval uh, so how did you hear about the call out uh, first of all I think I was browsing Facebook or Google Plus or something, and it just okay. came up on my news feed. All right. And I saw that, and I was actually using Fedora Jam at the time. Oh, really? And, yeah. And I was like, um, well, Fedora Jam, it's a great project and all, but it's not the go-to. Mm -hmm. It's not where most of the musicians or artists in general are going for a, a project such as this. So to see Ubuntu Studio on its deathbed, essentially, was pretty disheartening. I was just like, you know what, I can drop what I'm doing and shift over because I'm not that deeply embedded in Fedora Jam at the time. So I was shifted gears, went over to Ubuntu Studio, and now I'm probably eyeballs deep in a project that I never <laughs> thought I'd be eyeballs deep in, you know? Right. <laughs> Having a distribution that's bootable from a USB was a big deal for me because my drummer who I was working with He'd be able mm -hmm. to plug in and play right away. And that yep. was really important. So that's why I wanted something like the Ubuntu Studio 
to do that. Also, you were talking about, so you're wrangling the people together. I don't know if people know this, but you're not saying like we all got in a room together and said, let's work on this. No, you're doing this online. How are you managing this? Because that's a big deal. That's a lot of stuff you have to keep in mind. Basically do most of our work over IRC chat and using the uh, Ubuntu developer mailing list. Pretty much those are our two primary methods of communication. It's myself and just really less than a handful of other people. We're just kind of coming together with ideas and kind of trying to figure out what's the best way. Unfortunately, we really recently lost a key developer. So to fill, and she was actually out of, I believe, Turkey. So we were working with her. We were, I'm working with a guy in Canada and somebody in California. So really we're all over the globe and she stepped down. We're dwindling in numbers. What can we do to move this project forward and give it maybe a simpler direction? Not necessarily uh, pull back too much. And that's the thing is that I realized quickly that there was a lot of past burnout from mm-hmm. a lot of frustrations that were happening. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, we need to be ambitious, but at the same time, we need to make sure we're not overstretching ourselves. And that's where the balance where I was. And that, and unfortunately, when, when she stepped down, it just kind of made me think, you know what, we need, maybe we need to kind of pull back the direction more. So I, currently, we're looking into other scopes of doing what we were kind of working on this, same, but at the same time, we are looking at a big release, actually. It's got a really cool tool with Ubuntu Studio Controls that uh, our guy, Len Ovens, he did some amazing coding on it, and it is going to be, for the first time, you'll be able to start jack and then hot plug a USB audio card or or audio interface into it and have your computer automatically see it. Really? Yeah. Okay. This This is huge. This is something that I don't believe any other... Linux distribution that specializes in audio, really any other operating system that specializes in audio has ever done before. Utilizing the Jack Audio Connection Kit in such a way that can automatically detect and connect multiple sound cards at once and be hot plugged. Huh. It's this, when he was telling me about this, that he had the general idea and the code for it back in April, I was floored. I was like, this is, this is the direction we need to go. If we go in this direction, we have something that nobody else has. We have just made simplified the Jack Audio Connection Kit because it's this Enigmas library yeah. and development toolkit that people are using. And to be able to get into this and have it do this, all this stuff automatically makes it brain dead simple. And literally anybody could start using and producing music and audio using using Ubuntu Studio. And that was even one of the reasons why I used it to begin with. So Jack, for people who don't know, is kind of like the, I'm, I'm going to simplify all the <laughs> all the <laughs> descriptions, but it's kind of like the thing that controls the sound card. Basically an controller. internal patch base, the way I like yeah, to see Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's yeah, what I'm trying to say. It lets you patch all your different programs together, programs that support it, programs that are called Jack-aware programs. It lets you patch them all together. Yeah. Uh, it'll still give you like, which one do you want to be your primary audio device, which which one's the USB device that should be the primary, that kind of thing. Okay. Then it re- refers to it as a master. You tell it the jack parameters, like, for instance, you know, do you want 44.1, do you want 48K, 96K, so on and so forth. How many buffers per period do you want? That kind of thing. What's the buffer size? How, basically, how much latency are you willing to sacrifice? And then it also gives you some options for MIDI devices and then... Um, the option to start or restart jack or stop jack and just run off of pulse audio by itself and then close the window and pretty much once you have that configured then you're set to go you can go ahead and open up patchage and see all of your audio devices that you've configured right there how do you guys decide which ones you want to put in there basically this is this harkens back to when ubuntu studio was based pretty much just an add-on to a default ubuntu install like 10 years ago it was literally existing on a wiki page is how it got start and they would just have a set of commands that they would add on and then in 2010 when ubuntu went to the unity desktop it just seemed like it was in the best interest of the ubuntu studio project to start their own spin and have it be on the XFCE desktop. So with that came all of the different meta packages that already have all the different things installed. So it was just like, this is going to be provided mostly for people who can't don't have a reliable internet connection. Mm. So they can install this huge uh, down, downloadable I, ISO file and burn it to a CD and then just have everything they would need without having to wait hours for something to download. Hmm. So that's how it got started. 
we don't, we're not exactly in that situation anymore. But because of that, when you go to install it now, it gives you the option of removing or adding packages that you, you want. So what it comes down to in that case is everything that's there right now is pretty much just legacy. What's been going on is that we've actually had to remove a project lately and that oh. was the my paint project because oh, there is right. a huge library conflict with gimp and it was either sacrifice gimp or sacrifice my paint and we had to go with my paint because gimp is more popular of a project huh. it's unfortunate but it came it came down to that for people who don't know gimp is like the open source for lack of a better way of putting it photoshop it's not at all but it's 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 photoshop like <laughs> GIMP did just have a major release, and I'll get down to a little bit more technical details. GIMP 2.10 uses libmypaint 1.3. Mm -hmm. The latest version of MyPaint is 1.2 and is incompatible with libmypaint 1.3. So basically, the two cannot be installed at the same time just for that reason, because libmypaint 1.3 overwrites 1.2. For that reason, we had to drop MyPaint and... It, you know, it was causing things to not work. I was getting daily messages saying, failed to, failed to build, failed to build. I'm like, can mm -hmm. we just, we got an uh, emergency meeting. We got to figure out what's going on here. So, so I'm like, what do we do? We got to take this out of the seed. Let's remove one or the other from the seed. And my vote is for removing my paint just because it's a less popular project. As a develop slash lead, I kind of have to make those tough decisions sometimes. A lot of that kind of thing dictates what's installed by default as well. Also, what can happen sometimes is we'll get developers from Upstream Project be like, hey, so we, in fact, we had this happen recently where the lead developer of PicoPixel, which is a pixel art program, basically development of pixel art. Oh. He came to us, he's like, what would you guys say about including this in Ubuntu Studio? I'm, I'm like, we're, you know, he came to us in, in uh, our chat room actually. And then... I was like, nobody was in there at the time. So we, I, I woke up to this nice little log of messages. And so I, I went ahead and emailed him back. He left his email address, thankfully. And I, I referred him to the de developer mailing list. And I pink, I brought them in on it. I'm like, you know, this. It, it, tell us what this is about. Maybe we can listen to a little bit. And he get, explained to us a little bit and what it does. And so we had a discussion and we're like, you know what, this fills a niche that we don't have. And now we're, we don't have my paint in there. So it does make some room in the ISO. Huh. So we went ahead and added that. And now that's going to be included in 1810. It's a way to do pixelated art, like stuff that looks like the old covers on uh, Nintendo game packages. Right. Like Sometimes you can see the stuff on Wired Magazine, too, Right. From what I've seen. That's yeah. really cool. I've, that, that's interesting. I've actually tried to uh, create stuff like that, and it's a pain. That'd be cool to have an actual project. <laughs> he's developed his project based on that, and he's done a great job. It's It was already in our repos, and okay. he's been maintaining it there, too. So it's just like, sure, yeah, let's go ahead and put it in our seed, and now it's in the ISO, and now it's uh, even in the beta that just dropped the other day. Are you planning to do any promotional push, or are you still just relying on word of mouth? So we have a whole list of ways to get involved on our website, ubuntustudio.org. But when it comes to people coming up, they just show up and say, how can I help? And we're like, well, can you do this, this, this? And we don't hear back. So <laughs> it's one of those things where we, we have several projects that we want to do. It's just we can't really do them without the right people. And so in terms of getting that out there, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we, you know, we have our social medias. And of course, we have mailing lists and we have the rest of the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu community on our side, too, because we are an official flavor of a much, much larger project. So we have a lot of people who are willing to help us out that way and try to direct people our way. What we need are people who are willing to you know, do those sorts of things. And it's uh, we want to make a welcome app, which would replace the Ubuntu Studio installer package, which okay. is really just a script. We want to be able to do that. I tried to kind of do it on my own and I ended up getting lost because I don't know Python. Mm -hmm. I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag. So <laughs> I, I just need, you know, we need people like that who can code and take over projects, take on projects, that kind of thing. We need people who spread the word, you know, you know, being a average community member, you know, there's a lot of people who can just do that and People who are fans of the project, such as yourself, mm -hmm. spreading the word, you know, getting <laughs> that that article in, on Forbes was pr 
pretty awesome to see. And I ran across that just haphazardly and I was like, oh, oh this is cool. So I <laughs> reposted it everywhere. I was like, you know, uh, all over so our social media. I was just, I, I even shared it on my personal Facebook page just because I was like, guys, this is, I'm, I'm helping with this project. This is what we've got going on. And, yeah. it, and, you know, people were seeing that and they were, they were very impressed with being able to see that article uh, that, you know, that you guys basically did your entire album using mm-hmm. Ubuntu Studio. Yeah. And, and like that, everything, that, uh, like know, videos and all that stuff. This wasn't just like, oh, we'll just record it on it. No, no, no. We did everything on it. That, yeah. and, and that's one of our biggest success stories, really our biggest success story since I have been a part of the project. Oh, um, wow. Just because when I see stuff like that, I'm like, that's pretty much how the promotion get happens is because when we see success stories of people who are using the project to make amazing music amazing video and whatnot you know we have people post every now and then you know their own personal work what they've done in with the project and you know we recently held a wallpaper contest i saw that try to see what kind of see what people could create out there and and i had them posted on imager because imager not only is a great place to just kind of collaborate and bring in resources on artwork but also it gets eyeballs yeah, and so when we when you got people tagging stuff with the hashtag about Ubu Stew Contest eighteen ten, what is that? They uh-huh. click on it. Oh, what's this Ubuntu Studio? Google, you know? Yeah. Suddenly they've gone down a rabbit hole that I've wanted them to go down. Yeah, I didn't know about the whole Imager thing though. I knew about the the wallpaper contest, but yeah, the, Imager is one of those things that have all that's always intrigued me. And and yeah, I'll find myself on it. It's something where I do find a lot of interesting stuff there. Do you guys make anything personally for doing this? You want to know something? It's a completely volunteer project. It is definitely a labor of love for myself. And I know the other developers, it's a labor of love for them as well. The thing is, I I think for the most part, each one of us uses it in our day-to-day work or as our just general computing experience that we want. Myself as an audio engineer and knowing that I could be out there buying plugins from Waves or buying, you know, buying all these different plugins from all these other people, when I can download this, run it on my computer, yeah. and you know, use, it in, use it and use its plugins the same way I would use Waves, that's part of the reward is that it's, one, more cost-effective, uh-huh. and two, I tend to use a lot of these different things and use a lot of open source, like even you know, Behringer consoles, which I use, they are running Linux under the hood. So I can plug my laptop in that through the U- its USB interface, and suddenly I have all 32 channels at my disposal to do whatever I want with. So I can pull in and use different plugins, like from the CAF project, which I'm also partially involved with. Oh, are you? I um, love the CAF project. Oh, gosh, yeah. those they, They've done an amazing job. My uh, part of it comes with packaging it, pretty much, just for Debian and, and Ubuntu. I've been really trying to get started doing that because it's been it's been a stale project for a while. Let's put it that way. Really, because um, it's so impressive when you use it. Yeah. It's yeah, it, that's interesting. Yeah. What I've used is, and also just to make it simpler, especially when I share it with the other guys in the band. Now I've just kind mm-hmm. of stuck with the the CAF inputs just because yeah. I know that they're installed by default. So if I need compression or equalization or something like that, simple things. When we go to oh, yeah. do more of the mixing later on, then I'll start installing all the crazy stuff. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just yeah. for like back and forth working. Yeah, I love and and those are so impressive looking. I mean, it's oh, yeah. they do their job, but they also look really good. Like they look like I hate to say it. They look like real plugins. <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's not like these cartoony things that you find all the time, too. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into that. A lot of thought and what have you that goes into it. So they're and, and they're just nailing it. And I love using their pr- plugins because one, they look professional. They look like yeah. they're professionally, legitimately done. It looks like something you could get from Waves, yeah. except and it just works. It, it, it's kind of funny. They don't work on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I appear every now and then on um, the Linux Unplugged podcast, which is uh, fr- from Jupiter Broadcasting. The Linux Unplugged podcast, we have a virtual Linux user group that we have for people all over the world, including people such as Alan Pope and Martin Wimpress from the Ubuntu Project. I'm on first name basis with them. I've known them for a couple of years now. So I've got the, them, Chris Fisher. I used to pr- be a producer with Jupiter Broadcasting, so okay. I know him from that. And, you know, he's the hop, skip, and a jump away from where I live. So it's 
it, you know, got people like him who are, he, you know, he's hosting the show, got people like that who show up and are on the show, you know, yeah. you know, regular contributors and whatnot. I try to get on there and show off Ubuntu Studio when I can. It's just a joy to be able to be part of a project that is, you know, well known for one thing. And, you know, as, as far as Linux projects go, Ubuntu Studio, Ubuntu is number one. Ubuntu Studio is an official flavor. So we get that name recognition, which yeah. is nice. It's been a real honor, real trip over the past six to eight months for me to be working on this. And it's been a, a lot of fun, too. I'm friends with Matt Hartley as well, who's also an, a former host. Uh, we've also got uh, Noah Chalaya, who has his own show uh, at the Ask Noah show. Mm. And that actually airs on actual radio uh, oh, cool. over in North Dakota. So it's right. I couldn't be more proud of that guy. And the direction he's taken and becoming uh, such a voice for Linux and open source in general. Nice. Look at you name dropping. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a lot more I could go on. I'm not going to hear. <laughs> So I thought this was kind of cool to do this interview. It's kind of like if you had the chance to talk to the person that created Pro Tools. Just had the ability to sit down and chat and go, hey, tell me more about this thing you do and what's involved in it. So that was interesting for me. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this show at lorenzosmusic.com, where you can also listen to all of our music and download it for free. Next week is the interview that I accidentally deleted and had to redo with a musician from England. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs>